This video is sponsored by Skillshare. This week, I asked my three-year-old if she wanted me to print any toys out for her on my 3D printer, and she said she wanted Rapunzel. I know she already has one, but I think this one will turn out better. Let's go. Yeah, definitely better than the other one. Hey, aren't you gonna build the tower too? <sighs> All right, here we go again. Well, we better start with a reference image. And these images are mostly seared into my brain from the amount of times we've watched this movie. Well, let's try and match up the miniature to the right scale here. All right, that's too small. Let me fix it up here. Okay, that's better. She should be able to stand at the window here pretty good. That's likely a bit off since she's a lot smaller in the movie, but I want this thing to fit in her room and we don't have 10 foot ceilings here. I'm blocking out the main shapes here so we can get some overall dimensions on this thing before we start building it. All right, 1,370 millimeters works out to around four and a half feet. Not bad as a starting point. It's likely going to end up taller just because it's easier to add material than to remove it, but hopefully I can keep it reasonable. Now, the initial idea was to print some templates out and cut the widest part out of cardboard, the roof line. This worked out pretty nicely, and for the rest, I can even use one of these compass thingies. I think this one needs a bit of oil. Now, as fun as it sounds to cut out tons of cardboard by hand, I do have a laser engraver, so I think I'll use that to cut out the rest of the profiles. I'm going to start to build right in the middle with the tower living quarters, as seen in this still from the movie where Rapunzel's organizing her hair. After freehanding this pattern out and drawing some lines to sort of match up with the movie version, I sent it over to the laser printer to engrave into some EVA foam. Looking at it now, I think it ended up being a bit too small given my initial dimensions. Is this thing bigger on the inside, like a TARDIS? Anyways, I start sandwiching some of these layers of cardboard together to make this delicious pancake. Then I start laying out these square cut biscuits to extrude this upwards from the walls of the tower. At this point, I realize that I need to make the floor go in a bit higher. Otherwise, Rapunzel will need a ladder to look out her window. I cut out another pancake and added some internal structure to the previous attempt so that the new and improved floor can rest on top. This one gets a slightly larger version of the floor pattern glued on until it dries. The outer part of the hat shape will need to look a bit nicer, so I cut out some black poster board to wrap it around it. And we're done with the hat build. Roll the credits. Joker. From here I follow a similar process for building out the larger diameter living space. I am using hot glue for speed here, and most of this will end up as internal structure, so I'm not too worried about keeping it neat yet. Any exposed corrugation will get a banding of poster board, same as the bottom section. Yeah, this Rapunzel is definitely going to be too big for the tower, but I'm not painting another one, no way. I had an idea. To make up the rest of the tower, the part that is actually the stone tower pillar, I need something stronger than cardboard if it's going to hold up to a toddler playing with it. To get the right tower shape, I cut out some measured circles with a hole in the middle. And if you're a plumber, you will notice the diameter is exactly that of a 1.5 inch ABS drain pipe. Mario? The kind you run your sewage lines with. There, see? The cardboard will give me the outer shape while the ABS pipe will give me a strong core. To have something to secure this pipe too, I cut out some half inch plywood with my jigsaw. I'm cutting a hole in the middle here, as I had an idea to anchor the pipe that way. Didn't end up using it, but don't worry about that. Using more hot glue to hold the cardboard profiles in place, we'll have to do for now, while we build the rest of it. Because we're using pipes, we can actually use plumbing fixtures to connect the top and bottom parts. It's funny. So I'll have this section sticking out till the end. Alright, back to the hat. I mean, uh, main section. I did end up 3D modeling and printing some of the more complex shapes of the tower, like these bottom supports here. Great thing about 3D prints made from PLA is they can be solvent bonded with hobby plastic cement. I'm using a sprue goo mixture here to gap fill the middle seam. These all get hot glued around the base and this thing is starting to look less and less like a hat. Here I figure out a better way to secure the tube to the base is to use some of these leftover IKEA furniture brackets as a sort of makeshift flange. Hot glue and zip ties for now while we build it, but I'll be securing it down extra well later. Testing out the fit here, it seems like the plan's gonna work well. With that question answered, let's finish up detailing the exterior of the living space. There's a series of jutting sections that need to be added, like this rectangle section and this other smaller cylinder at the back. 
which I assume is the bedroom area. The front window gets these extra dramatic supports that jut out, and I had to cut it into the frame a bit to fit the bottom section of it. Alright, now for the wood details. For this, I cut out a ton of equal length EVA foam strips and stenciled them with a wood-like pattern on the laser. These are going to make up the wood pattern of any exposed timbers you see on the building. I find that sticking these down with hot glue can be forgiving, but you need to work neatly and not add too much glue, or else the squeeze out gets a bit too noticeable. I also added some details with actual wood, balsa wood to be exact, for some of these smaller details, like this tiny birdhouse window. The cap of a toothpick container worked perfectly as the bottom support for the smaller tower section. Just need to blend it in with some EVA foam. At this point, I'm taking care to cover up any exposed corrugated cardboard with more poster board, since it'll be hard to do later on. I'm using this small plastic pipe here as the cooking stove's exhaust. Double checking again to make sure everything still fits. Yep, perfect. Next up is the roof. I wanted the roof to be detachable somehow so that my daughter can put her figurines inside. And for that, I start with the exact profile of the top part of the living quarters. The idea is by putting a set of magnets every so often, we can make the roof sort of snap into place while still letting you remove it easily. I needed a bit of extra thickness to embed these magnets, so I added a sheet of black EVA foam to the top. This also gives it a bit of a nicer finish. Each magnet spot gets cut out and glued in with some 5 minute epoxy here. It's important to use stronger glue with these magnets, and I think super glue would likely not hold them in for long. I do the same thing for the start of the roof section now, letting the magnets guide where they place themselves this time. To build the actual roof, I went a bit overkill and designed the actual roof rafters and beams where you see in the movie. These are probably never going to be seen other than in this video, so you're, you're welcome. Maybe hit that like button and subscribe. I don't think it hurts. Now that we have this, it does actually help with the roof construction a bit. As I can glue it right on top and now it's a matter of bulking out the rest of the roof shape. We're going to start with that secondary tower here. It actually juts out of the roof line into a second floor. The rest of the roof is going to get coated in whatever scrap cardstock I have lying around. This is from some arrowroot cookies. Nice. Alright, let's do another hat making tutorial. Trace out a circle with a compass, cut it out. Cut out a small slit and bend it into a cone. Make a few more tinier cones and stack them together. Now you have a witch hat. At this point, the roof line is quite complex, so I'm taking some narrow strips of cardstock and following them down to where they would naturally meet the edge. Alright, next we're going to need some shingles. A lot of shingles. While I was cutting the shingles, those extra bits I designed in Illustrator also came in handy. The roof has several of these window details here, which I made sure to add, as well as these arches on the front opening of the tower. The main opening has these rather ornate doors and this intricate woodwork at the top of them, topped with a little decorative post. All right, you know what time it is? It's shingle time. And let me tell you, this was a ton of shingles. The pattern I drew out for these was fairly simple, just some hand-drawn lines with varying lengths of individual shingles overlaid with a wooden type pattern. Same as the EVA trim pieces, actually. While I was laying these down, I stopped around when I got to this point, because I had to add these antennas and other roof features integrated in with the shingles. For the chimney, I ended up coiling some telephone wire, as it looked almost exactly like the coiled pattern on the one in the movie. The absolute best way to lay these down is with tacky glue, not regular PVA glue. This glue grabs on and stays put much better, and for the more stubborn pieces I still use a bit of super glue and accelerator to fix the corners in place while they dry. Because these are made of cardstock rather than foam, they're going to last much longer. Let's take another look at the interior. While I was busy laying the shingles, I also cut out some profiles for the stairs and railings. This was tricky to model out since the stairway curves, 
I projected the railing and stair runners a bit longer so that I could bend and curve them with the building. I wanted to get a coat of dark primer on at this point, since I wasn't sure I'd be able to reach under the stairs later on. With the runners in place, getting the stairs and railings on was pretty quick. I also took the time to add some timbers to the bay window here, and gave the whole piece a nice coat of spackle filler for those big gaps. So now that I look at it, I forgot to add these little small bump details at the bottom, in between those support brackets. This is mostly covered on all sides by hard plastic, so I made these from XPS foam, since they likely won't be getting dinged and scraped too much. I also made this hook out of an old nail, bent it with some pliers and stuck it into the wooden beam above the doorway. This is going to hold Rapunzel's hair so she can use it as a pulley for whoever comes to visit. Getting back into the interior, I coated some paper drinking straws in balsa wood strips for the pillars under the stairway balcony. I also clad more details onto the stairway with cardstock to add visual interest. These beads here make great little post toppers, right Bill? Let's also make some tiny furniture to go inside. We're just starting with simple shapes. I cut out a balsa wood and glue down. I made a little table, a dresser, some cabinets, and also this little stove detail that goes right under the first landing. I looked around for some random bits and bobs to put on the shelf here. They're not immediately identifiable objects, but that's okay. We can use our imagination to make them into anything we want. Painting wooden furniture made of actual wood is quite easy. You just stain it with some brown and sienna acrylics and wipe off the excess. I also made some tiny drapes for the alcoves there. Just some thin gift tissue paper crinkled up and soaked in PVA glue. And for the fireplace, I modeled out an approximate version of the one in the movie and 3D printed it out. One funny thing to notice here is how the internal details don't really match up with the external details of the tower. I would have expected the balcony to end where the round feature starts and the fireplace to be off to the side, but it seems like there are some discrepancies in the movie's interior versus exterior shots. If you know why the animators did this, let me know in the comments. Alright, with the top parts of the tower mostly done, let's focus on the base. Remember that flange I made from earlier? Well, now's the time to seal this off. I'm making a little cylinder mold here for some concrete. The thinking is that it'll make the tower really bottom heavy and hard to tip over accidentally. I think everything is sealed up properly and I mixed some concrete off camera and poured it in. I ended up adding some extra cardboard off to the front here because I wanted that side to get some foam cut brick details, which would take up some of the volume. For the rest of the tower, I'll be bulking up the middle with some more cardboard. Cut into random shapes at first, but then getting wiser and just started wrapping it around the pillar. This will give me a good foundation to start plastering onto for strength. The top had to meet fairly flush with the other section, so I cut out more cardboard circles until it reached the right height. Let's take a look at how that concrete dried. It's really heavy. I had considered making the pillar detachable from the base, but decided that the seam wouldn't look very good. So I solvent glued in the connector piece with plumbing ABS adhesive. This isn't coming apart anymore. To give some smoother lines, I taped on some poster board strips going vertically. These are going to help give the tower its final shape. Time to cut some bricks. These are XPS foam cut bricks on a homemade foam cutter. Fast and loose with these are not going to be too precise since the source material has them going in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Took them for a quick tumble in the coffee tin with some nuts and bolts and we can start laying them down. I'm not going to be putting bricks down on the whole tower, just the part you see exposed in the movie. The rest is going to be implied by the way I'll be doing the plaster. It ended up taking a few coats of plaster to get a good shape on the tower, but now it's really starting to look like something. My patron said I'm turning into Roy from Close Encounters of the Third Kind. The shape has to be just right, okay? And it's prime time. I took everything outside quickly to spray prime, dark from below and off-white from above. The mostly white base coat will make it super easy to paint the vibrant colors seen in the movie. Almost forgot this little top detail here where the two parts will meet. See how easy it is to tint a white base coat into a brown here? Using really watered down paints to just slightly yellow and brown the tower. Also picking out some individual bricks to modulate the look. Yeah, that's starting to look about right. I actually kept a reference image with me throughout the process to make sure the colors weren't too far off. Using an airbrush, I picked out all the small wooden beams and braces in burnt umber. This was kind of fun and therapeutic, like coloring in the lines for a coloring book. Then I also mixed a light tan color for the plastered walls and sprayed that in several coats as well. The few details that are different colors 
got blocked in with my brush. The chimney got a brownish orange and the bottom braces here got painted in red. This balcony bay window got painted in a bluish teal. I was gonna need a ton of purple for the roof and I thought I would use some craft paint instead of my miniature paints for it. To make sure it shot well through the airbrush, I strained it through one of these nut and milk strainers you can get on Amazon. Gets rid of all the big dry paint flakes and lets me airbrush it much easier. Look at that nice, rich, vibrant purple. I love it. I did come in with a slightly different tone and sprayed random parts of the roof to give some tonal shifts. It's time for some windows. I'm pre-painting these frames brown and then I lay down a sheet of baking paper. I'm using some clear UV resin I have for the 3D printer and mixing some blue inks into it. Carefully putting some of the resin into the frame with a pipette and curing it with a UV flashlight. If you want to try this at home, make sure to wear the proper eye protection when shining the UV light. It can damage your eyesight. This will go into the bigger bay window section. I tacked it in with some super glue here. I think my super glue lid was getting a bit obstructed here because this happened. Oh. Whoops. Not a problem. I need to take some acetone to wipe it off my hands so I don't end up stuck to the tower permanently. Let's clean off the tip better so that doesn't happen again. Time for some dry brushing. This unites all the colors from before into something more realistic. Each section got the appropriate color brushed on. Pink actually makes a great highlight for purple. The interior here took a bit of time to get right. If we go back to that scene in the movie, you can see that the floor has slight shifts in the color of the tiles from orange to red to pink. To replicate this, I did paint random tiles in some vibrant colors, then it still looked off, so I gave everything an orange wash followed by a bright tan off-white wash. As this dried, it made everything blend together. I even set the right color in the grout lines. Next up, using some gouache wash I borrowed from Nick, I recess shaded all the nooks and crannies of the building and wiped away the excess with some water. Same for the roof and the pillar. Time for some ground cover now, and I start at the very bottom with a base layer of coconut fibers, sawdust flock, and proceed to start gluing it upwards onto the stonework and plaster. The whole bottom section of the tower is growing with vegetation, and I wanted to replicate that even going as far as sticking in some twigs in parts where it looked interesting. I'm probably going to be straying away from this looking screen accurate. I just keep layering it on. I can always give it a haircut at the end, right? There's also some vegetation in the living section, so I took some random bits and bobs to make some potted plants. These get quickly super glued in place and have some yellow flowers painted on. With that, let's peel back the masking tape on the connectors and put this thing together. Last thing we need is Rapunzel's hair streaming out the window. I made this from a few strands of twine thread draped and hooked onto the window. Please enjoy the rest of the footage and thanks so much for tuning in. I wanted to also thank all my patrons for their support. Projects like these would not be possible without their help. You guys are all truly amazing.